Hello there. This is Joshua the Heretic coming at you today. What's up? So I tried to post a video earlier today and I poured my heart out and told you some personal stuff about myself and my mic was muted. And one of you lovely ladies, uh, Miss, uh, Miss W or Miss, I don't know. I can't remember. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Please forgive me. But anyway, uh, one of you out there, lovely head covering lady, um, she, uh, she told me, it's like, did you mean that to put any voice? And it's the most loving and respectful way to tell me that your mic is muted. I'm like, oh, thanks. Appreciate that. That's very kind of you. But I think I fixed it. So now hopefully this will work. <clears throat> but anyway, what I intended to share with you was this harrowing tale about how I became a Christian. Um, when I first became a Christian, I was a very lonely child. Um, I was I was in the military. I was uh, arrested and under suspicion, under investigation from CID um, about uh, some illegal uh, activity that I was partaking in. And um, I uh, I had become a born-again Christian. There was this guy named Robbie, and uh, I, he, was, he was a born-again Christian, and I became a Christian uh, basically just to get his girlfriend, which was, well, no, I didn't No, Honestly, I made a, I made a honest, heartfelt choice to become a Christian. I used that honest and heartfelt choice to become a Christian to try and take his girlfriend. Let me, let me make that very, very clear. Cause initially I had <clears throat> pure motives. However, I was still a jerk. So <laughs> let's just get that straight now. Um, but, um, one of I was so desperately lonely as a child, uh, and so desperately lonely in my twenties, that uh, I I made a promise. I, I made two two promises, or I, I I made two very heartfelt prayers to God. One of them, which I'm very honest about, and I've told you guys several times about, is how I promise I made God promise that I wouldn't be like them. And them is just a nebulous term for modern Christians. And I said, I will sacrifice. I'll do whatever you tell me to do. I'll go wherever you tell me to go. I'll tell, say whatever you tell me to say. And I'll sacrifice whatever you tell me to sacrifice. As long as you don't make me be like them. And them was just the nebulous they. There was also another um, prayer that I said to God. And I rarely share this story. But I'm going to share it with you all because I love you. And I think it needs to be said. And I was very, very lonely. And I said, God, I will, I, you know, I don't want to be alone anymore. And I went to this church. It was a Pentecostal church. It was a church I got kicked out of. <laughs> but uh, one of the things the guy in the pulpit was saying was that, uh, you know, you should, you should really get specific on what you want and tell God in detail what you want. And then God will make that manifest in your life. And I was like, rock on. That's awesome, dad. That's, that's cool. And he's like, the more detail you get, the better. Because it says that God gives us the desires of our heart. And God gives exceedingly abundantly above all that we could ask or think. Exceedingly abundantly above all that I could ask or think. So let me think about this. And of course, me being a very carnally minded, brand new Christian, I thought of all the most carnally minded things I could think of. And um, it was a fairly... Uh, vain uh, list. Um, but I made this list. There was this list of all these attributes I wanted. As I grew up and got closer to God and my understanding of the scripture increased, my list became far more spiritually oriented and far less um, vain and uh, self-serving. <laughs> um, but I still held fast to this list. And God... I, I was so desperate that I, God said I would have to wait a long time and I was adamant that I wouldn't be able to, I'd probably off myself. I was, I was suicidal when I was a kid. Um, it was bad. It was really bad uh, because just, just from sheer loneliness. Um, uh, and I tried to, God told me, he was like, you're gonna have to wait a while. And I'm like, how long can, I can't wait that long. Can you, can you give me a rough estimate of how long I have to wait? And he's like, it's probably a bad idea to tell you that. And I'm like, well, am I just going to get her? Because I'm 21 at the time. Or I was 20 at the time. So I'm like 25. He's like, no. Um, 27? No. 30? No. Uh, 35? No. I'm like, 
I can't. Okay. And I, and I stopped asking God and I said, listen, dad, I can't go past 37. If, if I don't meet her by the, no, I think it was 36. I'm like, if it's not, I, I, you have to bring her by 36. Otherwise I can't do this. I just can't. There's just no way. <laughs> and so God said, okay, I'm 41, by the way, just so you know, well, make a long story short. When at the time I'm 30, I meet my wife. She's not the woman in the list, but you know, I'm super lonely. So I, I make a, a compromise and I have some beautiful kids and I don't regret it at all. And I love Michelle and I still love Michelle to this day. I think she's awesome. Uh, she just has some worldly issues that she's never gotten past. And she doesn't like the fact that I believe in some of the things I believe in. So, um, that's fair. That's, that's totally on her. That's her deal. I was not about to divorce her. Point is, okay, so that time came and I met Caroline. And Caroline, I fell desperately in love with Caroline. And she was awesome and she fulfilled the list. And it was super cool. But, um, and I met her just in the nick of time. But, um, my wife destroyed it. She utterly destroyed it. She lied to Caroline about me. She divorced me. She threw me away um, and uh, took my kids from me and my life was ruined. <laughs> so that sucked. So um, I went about my life and, and uh, I've slowly rebuilt it from scratch. And recently I've gotten to the point where I'm becoming more confident in myself and, and more uh, I'm realizing that a lot of things that happens in the Bible are bad things that happen, but they always happen for a good reason. Uh, Joseph sold into slavery. They were going to murder him, but they sold him into slavery and, you know, working for Potiphar. And then the girl comes in and tries to seduce him and he turns her down and he ends up in jail because she talks, she lies about him and she, he's in jail. And then he gets, I mean, interprets dreams and ends up becoming the heir to the king. and basically he's in charge of everything. And because of his persecution, he was able to rescue his entire family from famine, which is awesome. So it was beneficial that this persecution happened to him. And I'm starting to put on that perspective. However, I'm rebuilding my life. So as I was rebuilding my life, I'm like, well, you know, I've forgotten, you know, about my list. I let it all go. And so I brought it back and I, I remade it. However, I was realizing that I, I'm so focused, you know, this list has been a part of my, my biblical existence for so long. It was one of the things I was waiting for God to come to pass on. Like it was one of the things that, you know, I was like, I know that you love me if you bring me this woman, blah, blah, blah. And he never did. But I realized that, you know, I've been waiting for this woman to come into my life, but yet I'm not willing to work on myself. And I need to work on myself. I need to become the man that is worthy of this woman, this perfect, this exceedingly abundantly above all that you could ask or think woman that God is providing for me. I've never, I've, I just, I basically wanted somebody to take away my loneliness instead of being the man that I, that she needs me to be. I want the wife that I need and it's not good for a man to be alone. It's not, it's not good for a man to be alone. And it says that the woman was made for the man and uh, her desire shall be to her husband and he shall rule over thee. That's, that's godly. That's the way it's supposed to be. But still, I need to be the man in charge. I need to be the guy in charge. So I've made another list, but this list is not about a wife. It is about me. And it's about all the things that a woman would want in a godly man. And I can do something about that. You know, I'm like, okay, what are the things that I do that are not attractive to females? Well, one is that my room is a mess. My room is trashed. I have a, I'm a very messy person. I can fix that. I smoke cigarettes. I need to stop smoking cigarettes. That's bad. It's bad stuff. 
Um, what else do I do? I mean, there's there's lots of things I do that are just, I swear too much. I, I try not to swear on one of my videos, but I was in the army and I've never been a part of a congregation and, you know, it, 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 I fall into these habits. Um, but I have a lot of great qualities. You know, I want to be a father. I don't believe in birth control, but that's not a, I think that's a great quality. I don't believe in abortion or blah, blah, blah. But anyway, the point is, the point is, is that this is, this is going to be good. It's going to be me focusing on me and becoming the man that deserves the woman that God is going to provide for me. And I recommend to all of you out there that if there's a desire in your heart, be sure you're ready to receive it. It's like if a child wanted a motorcycle and he's like, give me a motorcycle, give me a motorcycle. And he's like, no way, I'm not giving you a motorcycle. It's like, but that's what I really, really want. I'm like, if I give you a motorcycle, you're going to get on it. You're going to crash it, probably kill yourself, maybe somebody else and destroy the motorcycle. Bad idea. Can't do it. I'm sorry. Well, relationships are like that for me. If I got on a relationship right now, I would destroy it and myself and probably hurt somebody else in the process. So I am going to work on me and I recommend that all of you prepare yourself for the time where God is going to bless you. Get yourself ready for the blessing that God is going to bestow upon you. And when you have that mentality to be the person that is able to receive those blessings, then God will bless you. Anyway, I'm Joshua, uh, the zealot. Come on back, subscribe, share, Comment. Bring comments. I love the comments. Uh, I'm really sorry. I forgot your name, Miss W. I forgot your name, but it, I know it was M-I-Z-Z-W and there was something else in there and I forgot what it was because I have a really bad memory when it comes to certain things. Not when it comes to scripture, obviously, but anyway, I digress. You know, I love God because I love virtue, justice, and salvation. Uh, yeah, let's see if this one works this time. Sorry about the audio. Bye-bye. <laughs>